Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. We say the collect for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and warm welcome to you, my brothers and sisters, to um, your church, St. George's Church, this morning. Um, today, we are going to celebrate as the Dedication Sunday. Last, um, this week, well, last week, the 8th of September, um, which the church, when we um, keep as the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary, this church was consecrated. The first part of the church was first consecrated on the 8th of September in 1900. So today, um, or, well actually on the 8th of September, we celebrate it as um, our 123rd, um, you know, the birthday, um, the, um, the two St. George's Church. Um, if we make comparison to other older churches, 122 years, past 122 years, is just nothing. Very young church, like infant um, still, among all the churches. But we are here today to say the big thank you to our Lord uh, for our past 122 years and for people's dedication to keep this parish church working for both um, the lay and ordained. And also we're going to offer our prayers for ourselves because now we are in charge in this church now and also we pray for our future generation who will uh, run um, this church for the mission um, of God in the future. At some point, the moment when we say, when I say normally the opening prayer, the collect, I am going to invite all of you to use your pew sheet, the weekly pew sheet, when you open that pew sheet on left hand side corner, top left hand side corner, there are two prayers, one collect one for post-communion prayer. I'm going to invite you to join me in saying this collect together, which is main prayer of the dedication Sunday, because dedication is not the job that I do only. It is the thing that we do together. So help, um, you know, we hope that we can be reminded of the purpose of our gathering and our existence in this church. But before that, let us offer some prayers of penitence together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
to join me in saying the main collect um, for the dedication Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the dedication of this house of prayer, we praise you for the many blessings you have given to those who worship you here. And we pray that all who seek you in this place may find you, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, may become a living temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, please be seated. We are going to have both a first and a second reading, but we are not going to have the psalm today. A reading from the book of Revelation. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride and the wife of the Lamb. And the Spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites, and on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire, 
and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Now, dear my friends, if you can, do you please stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David! They became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read, Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, please be seated. Is it the same boy that I baptised? The first baby that I, I baptised here, about nine years ago. But who is that young man? Gosh, I can't believe it. No, I can see you. <laughs> it is nice to see um, 
you know, those whom I baptized um, coming back, but not as the same baby anymore, but is now the grown young man. So it's nice to, nice to have you both here today. Um, many of you, many of you will um, agree with me on, on, on this kind of sentence. People in more than churches, people are so fascinated with this concept, the early Christian church. People want to know how early Christian churches developed themselves, how Jesus' ministry, early ministry, the ministry of the church, how things went. You know, how they managed the church grow, how they did it, how they want to do it. And also, when we talk about the churches, um, you know, the church planting, church growth, whatever, we cannot miss this person, a name called Paul. We all know the St. Paul. St. Paul wrote so many letters to everybody, and then he made um, kind of a very important missionary journeys. And for those who actually joined uh, me in doing some St. Paul's missionary, um, you know, um, the journey kind of, you know, the Lent talk. Was it Lent talk or something? I can't remember that. Many years ago, and we met in the, um, um, the vicar's room, and are still, the information is still there. Although one, um, the main tape of which um, gave us, you know, time frame has gone, but most of the, uh, um, you know, sticky films, post-its that we used are still there, because I think whenever I see them, it's a good reminder. But let's think about St. Paul, because it is important for us to think about how Paul did in terms of church planting, how he set up the church, and how he managed it. And I think that is so many things that we can learn because this church was built only 120 to three years ago. Paul, not like many, uh, not like what you know, the people believed, Paul was a very, very simple person in terms of church planting or the, as a missionary. He actually didn't care about how many people will be baptized, how many people are attending our Sunday services. He was not interested in the money they, they raised, how much money we share with each other, how to actually nurture people, how can I continually telling them or teaching them how to practice the um, um, Christian faith, and how can we bring them into the next stage of their lives, you know, their, their faith to the next stage. Paul was not very interested in these. It's a very, very shocking, actually, to know what he did. What he believed, Paul, what Paul believed was this. Oh, I am called to be a preacher. So, what he did was he went to some place and he preached the gospel. You know, repent your sins. You know, the God is coming. Blah, blah, blah. This is Jesus. You know, he preached everything there and then he moved on. Boom. And even in his, one of his letters, he said, no, I already preached the gospel. So there is no need, no reason for me to be here. What I need to do is move onward, move to another place that I can continually spread the word of the Lord. That's what he did. And then, of course, he maintained his relationship with the churches that he built. But the way that he maintained or the encouraged people to do was not actually to be concerned about the numbers of baptism, the size of congregation, how to maintain their church buildings, nothing. Because at that time, there is no building called a church. They only had synagogues. So the people had to meet somewhere, only in their homes. That's the main place of worship. But now, things have changed. Things has completely changed. We build the church, we dedicate the church building, but we changed. We were changed 
because we had to deal with reality. When this church was first built, 122 years ago, that's when everybody used to go to the church. That's when everybody used to give something to the church. That's when everybody had to do something for their Christian faith within their church community. Nowadays, things have changed. People don't give generously or enough. Church always is struggling with finance. Church always is depressed with a low number of people. What we do as a church not only us, but many of the Christian churches, what we do is sitting here and worrying about how to pay our bill, how to fill this church, how can I bring some more people in? Don't you think that's completely different from the concept of the church that Paul used to preach? Church must be a place where people gather and enjoy their relationship. Church is not a place where we build and, when we fi- and then we feel safe. Church is the place, only possible, only possible purpose of this church building is to tell everybody this is the house of prayer and we use this church for worship and we maximize this church building for the purpose of it, we are not here to worry about maintaining this church building. In that case, it is better for us to demolish this church and then just forget about the building. Church is the gathering of the people with the right mindset, with the right purpose. So, on this day, today we are here as a dedication Sunday. But I'd love to encourage you to dedicate, to think about the meaning of dedication in slightly different ways. Forget about the dedication of this church building. Let us go back to the moment when this church community dedicated themselves. We dedicate our relationship to God for the mission of the church. So most important thing that we need to dedicate. It's not the building, to my friends. It's not the building. Building is only shell, but ourselves who are worshiping God in this building. So today we celebrate one, two, three birthday, 123rd birthday. Even I wanted to, um, to make sure that this is the right number, so I actually rang Joyce Parton to make sure that I don't give you the wrong information. So 123rd birthday, we dedicate not only this church building, but our Christian community. Namely, you and me, us as a Christian worshipping community here in Freezy Water. Last 122 years, I think we have been doing well. We have seen ups and downs of the society, We have even maintained, we managed a difficult time like a COVID pandemic. Even early, um, you know, the elderly people experienced war as well. Even you saw the war memorials there. We have watched and witnessed the reality of the world here um, in this part of the world. But we continually pray that may the Holy Spirit give us strength so that we can be here and work hard not to maintain this church building, but to maintain the Christian community here. So may God bless each and every one of us, because Christian community is a living organization. We are the church. We are living organization. Without you sitting there, this church building means nothing. So we say the big thank you and ask the Lord to continually bless us so that you and I, we can work together and also this church may be filled with young people so that they can carry on what you and I, we have been called to do. So may God bless us. Thank you, Lord, for the last 122 years and also we ask the Lord to bless 
for another hundred years to come. Amen. And also, it is important for us to um, know that we share the same faith. Because if we <laughs> don't share the same faith, what's the point of we gather here together? So I'm going to encourage you, if you can, of course, please stand up as we say um, the statement of our faith, the Nisan Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, please be seated as we offer some prayers of intercessions. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, including our own. We pray for the church leaders, especially we pray for our bishops. As we know, we are looking for the next Bishop of Edmonton. We pray for all those who are involved with this process. We pray for our diocesan bishop, Sarah Mullally, and also we pray for the acting area bishop, Bishop Jonathan Baker. Pray for all the priests and the deacons in the Church of God, especially for those who are in their training. Pray for St. Stephen's House, Oxford, and St. Lighters College, London. That we may work together for the kingdom of God on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Brothers and sisters, let us also pray for the world where we live. We pray for the world's leaders and for all those who have more power or influence than others. We pray for our king and his prime minister, members of the cabinet, our local MPs, and all those who govern this country. They may work diligently to promote peace and justice, to support the need, and to protect the oppressed and persecuted. We continually pray for the victims of war and terror. Especially we pray for people in Ukraine, Northern Africa, South Sudan, people in North Korea and Xinjiang in China. We also pray for the victims of natural disasters or climate change. We can truly remember in our prayer the people in Hawaii that they may find peace in a place where they live. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. And as we dedicate ourselves and in this church building and all the things that we do together today, we also pray for our own parish. We pray for former members of this community, both lay and ordained. Pray for each and every one of us who gathered here in this church 
and for those who are following us online. We also pray for the future generation, those who will worship the Lord in this place in hundreds of years' time. That we may build faithful, strong, and flexible Christian community here in Freezy Water. And St. George's Church can be the house of prayer where people can feel the presence of our Lord. We pray for our Christian communities around here that we may work together for the spreading of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for those who are unwell in body, mind and soul. We have been asked to pray for Barbara Baker, Russell Trotman, Malachi Reed Gray, Paul Alfonso, Cliff Ray, Cameron Shaw Williams, Aileen Walker, Daniel Whitby and Eddie Smythe. May the Holy Spirit bring healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for the faithful departed and for all those who are waiting for our Lord's second coming and for all those who share the Easter faith. We pray for Pat Allen, Jean Walton, Francis Gambrill and Gary Sherman recently departed. And also we pray for all those whose years mind occur this week. Douglas Meeson, Henry Perry, William Graves, Phyllis Wood, James Newman, Charles Hall, Magic Coonin, Gwendolyn Corain, Eric Collar, Dorothy Cardi, Susan Stevens, Isabel White, Edith Fisher, Constant Wilson, Harry Miller, Ernest Partridge, Max Sinsley, Christian Brown, Clara Maynard, Reuben Martin, Winifred Adams, Edith Hager, and Robert Livermore. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. Amen. And also in silence, let us humbly commend our own private prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. If you can, would you please just stand for peace? God has made us one in Christ. And he has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, he has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Oh Lord be he with you and also with you lift up your heart we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you things. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you things. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Mary, the Blessed Virgin, and Saint George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Let Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
body of Christ.
us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot but fall. So keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we also say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to you if this is your first time worshiping with us. I've got a few notices here. Um, as Father said, today is um, our church birthday, and we've got some pink envelopes. And um, the pink envelope, we're trying to, to have a donation towards painting of the, the Lady Chapel. So, if you can, please donate generously. We have a PCC meeting tomorrow at 8 p.m. in the parish room. We've got our church harvest festival coming on the 1st October, and we've uh, dedicated that as a bring and share um, service where we all bring a little bit of home cooking so we can all share each other's uh, cooking. So there is a list at the back of the church. If you can sign, just put down what you can contribute on the day. We've got some future dates here. Uh, on the 16th, we've got men's breakfast. I think that's next Saturday. Um, We've already distributed the flyer, but it's still at the back of the church if you haven't seen one. Uh, if you're interested, if you haven't given your name to David, please speak to Jane or give David a call. Um, I, think, I think he's, is it? Sorry, what time is it again? It should be on the flyer. And the same we have on the following Saturday is the ladies' breakfast. Uh, we're all going to the same place. So please, if you want to attend, let me know. Um, and then on the 14th of October, we've got the family activity afternoon. As usual, uh, we will be requiring help for setting up and on the day. And on the 28th of October, we've got the family bowling event. We're all packing it in for before the winter comes. Um, so try and enjoy the, the nice weather before winter comes. And then uh, 2nd of November, we've got All Souls Requiem Mass at 7.30, and then December, oh my God, Christmas market. So please just take uh, one of the uh, few sheets and uh, look at this date and put them in your diary. And on Saturday, we've got a cleaning. Please, um, if you can help, I'm just uh, coming on Saturday between 9.30, and 12. Um, the more hands, the better, so that we'll be able to do more things and clean up the cobwebs and things before the winter comes. Um, and then the last is there's a basket at the back of the church for harvest gift, um, and also for the uh, harvest collection, we've got food bank, they've given us what they need. So if you just take a, a copy of this so that you know what to bring. Thank you very much. Um, two things, two, we are doing um, church birthday fundraising throughout the whole um, you know, September. Uh, we are using pink envelopes, especially for um, 
you know, for those who would love to make a donation for the painting of our Laid Chapel, uh, use a pink envelope as usual. But um, you will find, you know, the envelope that I'm talking about with birthday stamps at the back. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to paint um, Lady Chapel pink. Okay? It is going to be, it is going to be our previous color, same color, white um, ish. Um, so we're not going to paint our Lady Chapel pink. No, no. Someone just made a joke on me, so I said no. <laughs> and also. What a shame, that basket's at the back. I thought that was for Vika. Um, so, <laughs> but that's not for me, that is for um, our normal, um, you know, the harvest, you know, the collections. Of course, as you know, we're going to do this collection with our parish school as well. So last week in September, the last Friday of, um, in September, we're going to have the school harvest, um, you know, um, the collections service here in the church. And then you will remember we display in everything. Friday morning, school will bring everything. And before that, prior to that day, possibly from sometime next week, we are also going to encourage you to bring some donations, um, harvest donations. So the list are there. So please um, be generous in, in giving. And then please don't bring the fresh fruits. Okay, there are always some people who will bring sneakily, quietly, just to drop some very fresh fruits. If I see any fresh fruits, I will take them. So uh, <laughs> don't bring them. Only canned, long-lasting food. That's the food that we can use to help um, those who are in great need. So please be generous and bring them and leave them at the back. And when time comes, you will see a magic hens. They all come to the front and will be wonderfully um, displayed. So um, yes, yeah, so that's what's happening um, annually. Uh, apart from that, um, we're going to have tea and coffee um, today in the church because we've been thinking about um, having tea and coffee again in my garden for suggestions. The weather is too hot. I, I know you have been enjoying, we have been enjoying using our garden, but I think today is a way to us. So even before the service begin, at the beginning, I have to ask one of the servers to go and then leave the, all the doors open. So um, yeah, but still a little bit warm, but we can't complain. We can't complain, and um, we're going to have tea and coffee and here inside the church. And for those um, who have been here um, in this church, we've been attending this church for the last couple of weeks, but didn't have a chance to talk to me. I'll be around, so um, don't escape. Don't just disappear. Please say hello to me so that I may um, say hello um, to you. Is that okay? Apart from that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Whatever the weather, we're going to enjoy it. And it is a great day, the dedication Sunday for all of us. Would you all please stand for the final blessing and the final hymn. Oh, by the way, uh, your church warden, Dave Jenner, is uh, still alive. We know that he is out um, for a scout camping, but they have done 15 miles of walking Isle of Wight or something. But I can assure that he is uh, safe in this hot weather. And you're going to see him back um, you know, next Sunday. Brilliant. The Lord be with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love and raise you up on the last day. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now, the Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now, we're going to sing our final hymn, hymn number 153.